it was it was um it I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my King, and I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my King, and I love you with the love of the Lord. Good evening and welcome back to this tonight's worship service. A little thin tonight, but we're going to get through it. Glad you decided to come and worship the Lord in spirit and truth with us tonight. Just a couple new announcements. We're going to go over just a couple we had this morning. We want to remember those in our bulletin who are sick. And let's let's remember Paul Luttrell and uh, update on... Uh, we're happy to have Allison back. That's what I'm, so I was trying to thank here. Also, uh, uh, if you want to sign up for the communion, we're, we're certainly looking for some volunteers to come and do that uh, on Sunday mornings and Sunday evenings. Also, uh, our fellowship meal is going to be next Sunday morning. Uh, next Saturday will be Bible ladies' Bible class. And we also have personal works group tonight. Anyone who can stay and help out with that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, that's all the announcements I have for this evening. And, and this evening's worship service, uh, Brother Joel Foster is going to uh, open us in prayer. He's also going to lead us in our in our song service. Uh, Brother Dennis Trine will be serving the table if there's anyone here that didn't have the opportunity this morning. And he will also be having our lesson today. And uh, David Mormon will be closing our, our worship service in prayer. So if you would, Brother Joel. Bow with me, please. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for this time that we have once again to assemble, to open your word, to study a lesson, to sing songs of praise and edify one another. For those who have not had the opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper, give of their means and to approach your throne in prayer. We're thankful for this avenue of prayer. Father, we don't take enough advantage of it. We fail and fall short so often, but we pray that you would help us, that you would bless us, even when we fall short of our duty as the Holy Spirit groans with us for those things that we don't even know we need to ask. Father, we're so thankful for this church and the church the world over. We pray that you would be with, with us, that we can continue to stand for your truth, that we can set aside those things that are contrary to your word. And as we learn the scripture more fully, that we can follow and implement those things as well. Father, 
we have many that are sick, that are not able to be with us, <coughs> that are under doctor's care. We pray that you'll be with them. It was good to be able to see uh, Deborah and Rick this morning. We pray that you'll continue to bless them, restore Deborah her health. Rick, as he has struggled with some things as well, that you would be with him. We have others that Laverna that is undergoing some testing right now and others that we know of that are sick and are shut in. We pray that you continue to be with them. Be with Dennis this evening as he opens up your word. Be with each of us that we attentively listen to his lesson and we can take those things and use them as we continue on here on this earth. <clears throat> we pray, Father, that you'd be with us, that we can strive to continue to follow you, that we can have that home in heaven when the time arrives. Whether it be upon the return of Jesus or whether we are rise from the grave to meet him, we pray that we would have that home that we would be found faithful in judgment. Father, for those that we continually pray for, for the ones that assist us, our military, our first responders, pray that you'll be with our politicians, our judges, that they would stand for your word, that you would defeat them in those things that are contrary to your word. And let us submit to them so long as they do not demand that we renounce our allegiance to you. Father, we pray now that you'd be with us in this service in the upcoming week. In all things, Father, your will be done. We ask the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Two six six. Two six six. Love with everlasting love. Let my grace that love to know. Gracious Spirit from above, Thou hast taught me it is so. Oh, this full and perfect peace, all oh, this transport all divine, in a love which cannot cease, I am his, and he is mine. In a love which cannot cease, I am his, and he is mine. Things that once were wild alarms cannot now disturb my rest. Yeah. 
Still he doth love me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving arms would I flee. When I remember that Jesus loves me, I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Oh, if there's only one song I can sing, when in his beauty I see the great King, this shall my song in eternity be. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, but me. You'll open your Bibles to First Timothy chapter two. First Timothy chapter two. Starting in the first verse, Paul writes, First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings who are in high positions, that they may lead, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger and quarreling. The Bible tells us that God is love, that we should love him with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. This, of course, is the first and the greatest commandments. And the second is to love others as ourselves. For if God loved us this way, then we ought to love one another. John, by inspiration, says in 1 John 4 and verse 20, that if we claim to love God, and we do not love one another, then we are liars. One of the ways that we demonstrate our love for one another is by praying for them. And perhaps this is what led Paul to encourage Timothy, and because of these writings, us, by saying that I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people. There are only two people that we can pray for, ourselves and others. And most of the time, we are selfish in our prayers. We find ourselves asking, petitioning, requesting, praying for me, giving thanks for me what is mine. Eric Fife in his book on prayer says that nothing is more maddening than listening to a person hitting one note on the piano again and again and again. And he goes on to say that if we are ever going to make music in our prayer life, that we must learn all the notes. And that must means that we must pray for others. But what I would like to do tonight is to give us a simple five-finger exercise that will help us in remembering to pray for others and to note who these significant others really are. The first one is the thumb. 
You see, the thumb is the closest finger to the body. At the same time, it is very strong and useful. If we were to lose our thumbs, it would severely handicap us in what we can do. So our thumb is to remind us to pray on the behalf of those closest to us, our immediate family, our closest friends, and others who are close to us. Have you ever noticed that we sometimes never get past the shopping list type of prayers? For instance, when we pray for our children, we ask that God may make them prosperous, that they be happy, healthy, have good jobs, maybe have a comfortable home. But this may come as a surprise to us, but there are no prayers like that in the Bible. When Abraham played, prayed for Ishmael in Genesis chapter 17 and verse 18, what did he pray for? He prayed that Ishmael might live correctly before God. And when Job prayed for his children in Job chapter 1, he did this for the forgiveness of any sins that they may have committed. And he also act, offered sacrifices on their behalf. When Jesus prayed for his disciples in John 17, he prayed that they might know God as God and him as the Savior that God might protect them from the evil one, that they might be as one as he and Christ are one, and ask that they be sanctified by truth. When we pray for those closest to us, pray that they become children of God and that they are useful for the kingdom. There is a story about a chaplain Clark Poling. He was drafted in World War II. And just before he was to deploy, he asked his father not to pray for his safe return, for he felt that that would be selfish. But he asked him to pray that he would be adequate in courage in all circumstances, and that he would be brave when bravery was called for. And then at 1.15 a.m., on February 5th, 1945, the troop ship, the USS Dorchester, was hit by several torpedoes and was sinking. Clark and the other three chaplains that were on board gave up their life jackets to wounded sailors. As it was then that they locked their arms together and went down with the ship. And when his father was told of his death of his son, his father said that his prayers had been answered, that his son was made adequate. We need to pray for those close to us, that God will make them adequate in all things spiritual, not that they might be carried through life on vel velvet pillows of ease. The forefinger, the second finger, is a finger that we use to point to others. This finger will help us to remind us to pray for those that we are attempting to point to Christ. Prayers for the lost. Prayers for those that we invite to services with us. The forefinger reminds us to pray for those who are pointing toward Christ. It doesn't matter who they are. It could be our Bible teachers the preachers, the missionaries, those who are involved in personal evangelism on any level. Are we praying for those that we are trying to win? That is a must. We can never try to be evangelistic without prayer because the results of that are typically fail. And if we're studying with someone, do they know that we are praying for them? Nothing is more thought-provoking, more powerful than a personal prayer with a name that is attached to it. Wouldn't you have liked to have been with Jesus on the edge of Kidron, John 17? Would you have liked to have heard Jesus personally 
praying for you, calling your name. But how do we feel when we hear our names being spoken of in someone else's prayer? Then we have the middle finger. It's the tallest. It's the one that stands out the most. And it reminds us to pray for our leaders. Paul in 1 Timothy 2 and verse 2 specifically mentions praying for kings, praying for those in high places. Friends, at a time when our political leaders have lost their integrity, we need to pray for them. And we especially need to pray for our leaders and their honesty in dealing with people, all people. And if we were to read verse 2 closely, for kings and all those in high places, that was that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. Friends, it's so easy to criticize them for what they're doing. And instead, we should be praying for them. But we also need to pray for those in this congregation who have taken on the responsibility of taking care in all aspects of this congregation, from the building to our Bible class teachers, to those who serve on a regular basis. Just as with leaders in our nation and communities, it's easy to criticize. Often the criticism comes when decisions are made that we do not particularly agree with. But instead of the criticism, we need to pray to God that he will give them the wisdom that they need to make the decisions and then trust in God's answer. If we want a blessed family, church, community, and nation, we need to pray for the leadership. And then there's the fourth finger. This is the weakest finger of all. Any of you who types knows this. I prefer not to use this finger because it is lazy. It doesn't always seek out the right key. I get frustrated when I try to use the capitals in it and I keep hitting it with the wrong finger. This finger reminds us to pray for the weak. Pray for those who are sick of body, soul, mind, and for those whose spirits are dead. We often pray for those who are not ser at services because of physical health problems. We often ask God to heal them, to make them feel better, and that's what we should be doing. That's good but we should also pray for those who are sick of soul, those who are not here because they choose not to be here. They choose not to worship, to praise, and to fellowship. Many of us have heard of Billy Sunday. Billy Sunday was a powerful preacher, but before that he was a famous ball player. And he was going to do a campaign in Columbus, Ohio, and he sent a letter to the mayor. And he said, I am coming to your city for a campaign. Please send me a list of those who are weak and in need of prayers in your town. So the mayor of Columbus responded by sending him the phone book of Columbus, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Friends, there's no shortage of people that we need to pray for. When we promise to pray for others and we don't do it, it is an act of hypocrisy to promise to pray and then not. It is a good habit to get into to keep our church bulletins close at hand. We have many in there that are in need of our prayers. But we should also be writing down the names of those we personally know that we want to keep in our prayers. Their names may be our neighbors who are struggling. It may be friends that we know at work who are going through difficult times and even our own family members who are dealing with issues. 
and we need to pray for them. James reminds us in James 5 and verse 16 that the prayers of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Then there's the little finger. That's me. That's you. It stands for the one doing the praying. Of all those around us, no one knows our needs for prayer more than we do. No one knows of our spiritual poverty like we do. We need to ask God for forgiveness of our sins. We need to ask him to help us to overcome the sins that we constantly seem to fall into. We need to ask him for help to become better in all aspects of our lives. We all need to pray more and more and to pray for others more and more. But we also need to allow God to use us more so that we can become his agents for both answering our own prayers and the prayers of others. We need to pray for one another's salvation, for the sick and the poor, for the lost, for our leaders. And if we can find ourselves in praying for these more, then we will find also that we will be criticizing them less. Because when you're praying for someone by name, it's hard to criticize them in the same sentence. As God's family, we need a healthy prayer life. And this is best accomplished by including others. Many do not realize it, but prayer is one of the privileges of being a child of God. If there is anyone here this evening who is in need of our prayers, we want to give you that opportunity. But just as important, and maybe more so, if there is anyone here who is desired, who has the desire to become a child of God, we truly want you to do this today. Through your repentance and confession, through your New Testament baptism, you can become that child of God. And the angels in heaven will be singing, and you will be given a promise of eternal life and an heir. If there's anyone that has a need this evening, won't you come as together we stand and we sing? Cheeks are filled with sorrow and care, hearts are lonely and drear. Birds are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very
believe there's anyone here that is in need of the Lord's Supper tonight. I'm not. Yes. Just, oh, okay. Please be seated. You can just take it. As we come around this table to share a common meal, a meal that demonstrates the sacrifice of our Savior, we pray that as we take this, even if we have done this this morning, let us focus on it again and seek the true meaning of this memorial dinner meal that our Savior sacrificed his life for. Will you bow with me, please? Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the sacrifice of your Son, and we thank you so much for giving him to us to be able to come to this earth to show us the way to you and to reconcile us to you. And we ask now as we take this bread that represents his body, we pray that we do so in a manner that is pleasing, that brings glory and honor to you, and your son. In his name we pray. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this fruit of the vine that represents the shed blood of your Son. And we pray, Lord, that as we take of this, that we keep in mind that this sacrifice, this shed blood, was to wash our sins away. And it was so unselfish in the act. May we never forget it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I will leave the basket on the table in the event that there is some that need, still need to give today. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the blessings of life and for all that you have done for us. And as caretakers of all the blessings you've given us, Lord, we just pray that you will accept this token that you have received and it may further thy kingdom here on this earth and be able to keep this wonderful place where that uh, message can be delivered and that fellowship can partake and continue. We thank you so much for all you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Appreciate everyone being here tonight. I really do. Um, please remember we do have personal works following the services tonight. And also the ladies Bible class this coming Sunday and or Saturday. And the fellowship meal on Sunday. First one in two months. So it's not third. We'll be dismissed with prayer. Please stand. That's right. Yeah, my father. I saw his very nice to her to her and I to enjoy the real word. And that's why we have it this weekend. That's that side and that's my that's cold weather tonight. You know, to us the real word. And her today, her life is just others. And then this 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 lesson tonight is with the church of Baldwin. And his wife by, by, by her side, you know, to us, through her word. Of our military special finders, of our police officers, our firemen, military, or, or maybe of our missionaries, of uh, uh, Jane, Tammy, and Abazil, to your little children very much. Give to us the real word. It's all the spirits to your name here tonight. This others, this way of all through our lives, that this others have over COVID or get gone 
Look at Church of Mauna. They paid a lot of people to us for you. There can be a blessing, Jim and Church. Stay upon us. Jim and Church. The real word. If it does a sick, does an abortion, add to it. If it does a hospitals or family members, they all the more be well. Just be prepared for burning. Hope it gets well. Have doctors to care of him. Paper of Deborah, Ruth of Wick, and Studio, and Team Westmoreland. To see today, give it to us through your word. I let this time into some more. But his children, very much. All the, all the grandchildren, give it to us through your word. I'm part of this place, and the uh, Public, public uh, traveling this week, or they're not working this week. Where's my own wall through our lives? Very much. I was just family right here. We could just a model. We're in part of this place, this little building, you see that night. She's uh, God's word in the Bible about Moses. He says, He is a man. Give it to us through your word. Help my sister, boy, and Tom. These prayers are very much. Help my nieces. We call them. Give it to us through your word. Pay for a for short and many times, give it to us, so we meet again. It's a funny hour. This is a play. Amen. Amen.